What is going on YouTube? Carter here with Edge Mindset. Uh, I got another video for you. We're talking about Microtech again. Um, I'm actually kind of phasing out of my Microtech collecting and owning for now. Uh, getting more into kind of folders and things like that, uh, titanium folders. Uh, but I did, uh, so I've got both of these up for sale. Uh, did a full video on this guy, and man, I really regret maybe letting that one go. But this one's going out as well. This is the Direct Delta uh, Shadow. Beautiful knife. Uh, really cool. So completely blacked out. Even the serrations um, are DLC'd, which is kind of cool. I do have a Shadow Scarab 2 where the serrations are not blacked out. So I don't know what that's about. My guess would be that uh, maybe that was the beginning of the shadow line and they didn't really think about it at first. And then they're like, wow, it's not really a shadow with all of this steel poking through. And then so maybe they, they started doing the DLC because you can get um, my Scarab 2 single edge full serration. I've seen both versions where the serrations are DLC'd and where they're not DLC'd. So I don't know what the difference is. The shadows don't seem to be serial numbered, or at least not all of them. This one is uh, serial numbered, 198, but my scarabs are not serial numbered, so I don't know how early in the process it is. Anyways, uh, so what I want to talk about is uh, Microtech knives. Um, why people get into Microtech knives? Uh, a couple reasons. Um, it, it's a little bit of a different culture, right? Uh, a lot of Microtech people are more collectors than users. And it's not that these knives are not capable and there's plenty of people in the Microtech community that use their knives. But a lot of the times they're not straight users. You know, they have users, they have certain Microtechs that they carry and they cut with, but then they also um, collect them. And there's a reason for that because Microtech is very geared towards collecting. They do a lot of special edition, limited editions. They've been around for a really long time. So there's some people that uh, only get into collecting vintage Microtechs, maybe OD Scarabs, uh, maybe OD Scarabs with tritium in the button, you know, maybe Vero Beach produced only Microtechs. They've been around since the 90s. And so they produced a lot of models, a lot of iterations. And as such, it creates a huge amount of collectability in their industry. You can collect vintage ones, but even new ones. You know, you got these signature series here. Is this a collectible knife? Ah, it could be. You don't know. It's a little bit of a gamble. Uh, this is a pretty good example. It's cool looking. It's distinct. Um, it retailed for not a ridiculous amount of money. And it's this particular one is a very low serial number. So this could be quite collectible, especially if they, for some reason, don't produce these anymore. But they might. They, they might produce these out the wazoo. Every year, they might do a different antique bronze version, and they may continue to do them, and so it might not uh, be collectible. And that's, that's part of what feeds into it, right, is you're not quite sure what's going to be a collectible item and what's not. Perfect example, the Glycon. I've since sold my Glycon uh, production run, now that could be a knife that really doesn't get produced a lot. Uh, it does cost more to produce, and so it might not be a flagship model that's just available. Uh, might be something they do for a year or two where they do limited kind of production runs on it, um, and then it may go away. It may go away forever, who knows? Or they may produce the snot out of it and flood the market with them, and then they have no value. So. Uh, it's, it's hard to say. I will say, generally, when you're talking about collectability, a lot of the times it's the knives or objects that you don't think will be collectible that end up being collectible. What do I mean by that? Uh, well, back in the 90s, there was a huge comic book boom, and I was in it. I was a young man. And I loved it, and I was in it. And what started a lot of that boom is the whole collectible concept, right? People saw Action Comics number blah, blah, blah is worth $200,000, and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, these things can be worth a lot of money. Um, and so the industry fed into that by doing a lot of limited edition, special covers, things like that. People started storing their comic books in um, Mylar bags with... Uh, boards and acid-free this and acid-free that. 
Uh, but what it did <clears throat> is it did the opposite of what it intended to do, right? So now everybody, <laughs> every household has like some sort of box full of these special foil cover limited edition comic books all bagged and prepped. And so everybody has them so they are worth nothing, zero, nilch. You get nothing, sir. Uh, nothing burger. They're worth nothing. Everybody has them. You can't give them away. But what started, what spawned the whole concept of um, that collectability is some of these older comics. But the older comics were worth money because nobody ever thought they'd be worth money. So nobody took care of them. They would throw them away. They would use them for kindling. They would use them to line their bird cages. Uh, they were garbage, right? People thought these comic books were garbage, and so they destroyed them. They got rid of them. They were for kids. Nobody cared about them. So... The fact that it's hard to find a good example of those comic books and the cultural significance means they're worth an astronomical price. So my point is, why am I talking about comic books? Well, it's the same thing here. A lot of the times with knives too, Microtech knives, when you're talking collectability, and that's what we're talking about here is collectability, not usage. That's a whole different concept, whole different thing. Can you use your Microtech knives? Yes, you can. Uh, I'm talking the collectability aspect. Um, same, same thing applies. You know, you get some special edition that's la labeled as a special edition, right? It's, oh, signature series, blah, blah, blah. Uh, everyone's going to buy those and everyone's going to keep a mint in box. And that means they're not going to be that scarce. Unless it is something where the company legit says we're only making 100 of these. In which case, I know Microtech sometimes goes back on and they say they're going to do that. And then they produce more or they produce a slight variant. And they're like, wow, we meant... Only 100 would be made in this blade, but now we're doing all the blades, so they're everywhere. Um, a lot of the times, those kind of knives don't end up really being collectible because everybody is getting them and saving them. What ends up being collectible are the knives that people didn't think would be collectible. So when you look at Microtech knives, what are some of the more sought-after knives? A lot of them are just QD scarabs, executive scarabs. If they're mint in box with all the stuff, they are worth thousands of dollars. Now, these knives were not limited edition, signature series, special super, blah, blah, blah. When they came out, they were normal knives. I had one. You could just buy them from Blade HQ. The executive scarabs were actually cheaper than the regular scarabs because they had a smooth body. But because people didn't think they were special at the time, they bought them, they used them, they lost them, they whatevered with them. And so now, if you have a good condition one, it's worth a lot of money. So that's why my point is, <clears throat> oh man, puberty, it's a, it's a struggle. Uh, my point is knives like this, I mean, these could be collectible, but there's a good chance they won't be because everybody's keeping them nice. Everybody's buying them, keeping them in the box because they're the signature series, blah, blah, blah. And uh, there's a good chance that these don't actually end up being that collectible. Now, any limited knife kept in a good condition is probably a good bet if you hold on to it long enough. Uh, but in terms of immediate, like massive collectability, probably not. Probably not because everybody that bought these two knives are probably keeping these mint in box. They're not using them. They're not losing them. They're not breaking them. They're just keeping them nice so that they can collect them. And that means there's going to be a lot of new in box versions of these knives. Just a prediction there. Just a prediction. Now, Microtech, like I said, because of all these things, it is more of a collectible brand. And you're going to find more collectors in that world for those very reasons. Uh, something like this Medford that I always show in my videos because it's sitting right here. Uh, not, not really, not at all. In fact, it's the opposite, right? Like when I'm looking to buy a Medford, I want the latest edition with the latest features. I want the lock bar stabilizer. I want the six gun hole pivot because I know Medford has improved on their manufacturing uh, since implementing some of these features. And I have a better chance of getting a really good solid knife if I buy one with those features. I am not looking to buy first gen Medfords. Um, I know there's some exceptions there. You know, there's there's some knives that like the Genesis where it's kind of cool to buy the first gen of that and it might go away and, and stuff like that. But for the most part, I'm looking at this more, more as a tool. Now, you know, I buy knives because I think they're cool, pocket jewelry, um, functional pocket jewelry. But it, it is more of a tool and more of a 
uh, not really a collector's item, right? I want to keep it nice because I, I move a lot of knives. So the more marks it gets on it, the less money I can get. But other than that, I'm not keeping these new in-box minty fresh. Microtex, though, are different. They are more collectible, and you are more prompted to keep them minty fresh. Also, Microtex have very fragile finishes, right? When they are minty and new, they look amazing. They look beautiful. Uh, but because of the materials, they, they wear very harshly, I'll say. And I don't necessarily mean that's bad. Um, I've seen user Microtex that are just beat up that look really cool. But generally speaking, <laughs> they look pretty bad and they show wear very, very quickly. Uh, if you get wear marks on this handle, you're going to see bright white aluminum poking through and it's very striking compared to something like this where uh, wear on something like this will actually just add to the finish for the most part. You know, it, it'll blend in. This is not a knife where little marks are going to make it look bad. Um, it's going to kind of... Um, especially one like this, literally, all you're doing is just adding to the tumbling. This one is actually a way better example because it has no surface finish other than bronze anodizing, but it's tumbled, right? So this is meant to hide wear. That was the big push with these kind of finishes, hide wear. So the opposite of what you get here, if you get a scratch on this thing, it is going to stick out like a sore thumb and it's going to look very striking now like i said sometimes you know wear on these especially if it's consistent actually looks good but for the most part it doesn't you know if you get a if you get a scratch on this pocket clip it is going to be like oh my gosh this is a blacked out knife now you got this bright stainless steel scrape on this pocket clip that's no good uh whereas on this thing you wouldn't even notice um I, you know like uh you have to really look to be like, has this thing ever been carried? You know, has this thing ever seen a mark on it whatsoever? Um, so just completely different kind of modes. So anyways, TLDR, the point of this video is there's a lot of conjecture about Microtex or just toys or collector's items. Yeah, in certain in certain eyes, that, that is all they are, you know, and that's fine. That's fine. That's the point of this video. That is fine. I don't understand this concept of like, well, if you don't view it as a tool and it's not a, a hard use item, it, it's invalid. Why does that make anything invalid? That is ridiculous. That's like saying vintage baseball cards have no point because they're only worth 0. 0.0002 cents of paper. No, it isn't. Baseball, no. People collect them. If you have a, a rookie Mi Mi uh, Mickey Mantle card, Sorry, I couldn't say that word. Uh, that's worth a bunch of money. I don't see anybody in the comments saying, it's not worth that. It's worth 0. 0.0002 cents of paper it's printed on. No, they know it's worth value. But for some reason in knives, they're quick to point out, well, there's only $30 worth of materials on this knife. Uh, so therefore, you should only pay $30. In what world does that make any sense with any other product on this planet? where you count up just the materials used to produce the knife and say that's what it's worth. Makes zero sense. That is never the case at all. And even aside from manufacturing costs and people costs and marketing costs and everything that goes into a product, you've got to make a profit. You've got to sell the thing. And depending on how many units you move affects the price. Microtech is not in every home in America. It's not. So they, they're not moving volumes like flat screen TVs. So as such, their margins have to be higher. They just do. To stay afloat, they have to be higher margins. Um, that, that's how it is. The more niche of a product you have, the higher the margins have to be because you're moving less units. And that's fine in every other industry. But for some reason, knives, particularly Microtex, uh, it's this big call out of of how stupid Tony is and the rich, arrogant son of a bee that has the nice house. Of course he does. Of course he has a nice house. And yes, these knives are quote unquote overpriced. But the good thing is you don't have to buy them. You don't. Just get something else. Get something you find more appropriate cost wise. Sorry guys, this turned kind of a little bit into a rant. It was supposed to just be talking about collectability in knives, particularly Microtex, and it divulged into ranting. Um, all right, I'm out of here. I got to stop this. Uh, this is going to just keep going on. So I'm going to quit. You guys take it easy. Leave comments down below what you think about collectible knives. And is that okay? Is there still validity 
in said usage, right? All right, guys, I'm out. See you later.